welcome. My name is Kathy Smith, and I am honored to be Maryland's Assistant Secretary of State. I provide executive oversight of the Charities and Legal Services Division. Our division is responsible for the flag protocol and for many other duties. As indicated in the email notification about the town hall, this town hall will be recorded, and the link to the recording will be available on the Secretary of State's website after the conclusion of this town hall. And by choosing to join us today, you are consenting to the recording as a part of the town hall. The Secretary of State is customarily entrusted with the role of educating the public about the history, the protocol, and appropriate display of the Maryland state flag, uh, individually and as it's flown with other flags. Our, fla our office issues flag alerts to other agencies and to all those who are interested when they subscribe, when the Maryland state flag, the U.S. flag, or both will be flown at half staff. Every time the president or governor issues an order to lower or raise the U.S. and or Maryland flags, our office is responsible to issue that notification. And with us today is our fabulous division administrator, Michael Schlein, who's going to lead us through the protocol. So, Mike, turn it over to you. And I'll ask our viewers, um, please, if you please mute your microphones, you're welcome to keep your cameras on if you like. Thanks so much, Mike. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy. Good morning, everybody. Uh, so talking about flags today and uh, really just why things happen the way they do uh, with the lowering of the flag, flag notifications, and then just some general protocol uh, that we've added into the town hall this year, just based on questions we received before about proper display uh, with other flags, uh, whether it's national or other states or county flags. So. First, we're just going to talk a brief history of the Maryland flag. Uh, it's been described as the perfect state flag, bold colors, interesting patterns, uh, heraldry, you know, that, that really shouts Maryland. The, the design of the flag comes from the shield and the coat of arms of the Calvert family, the colonial proprietors of Maryland, um, as well as the Crossland family, uh, the uh, proprietors given governmental powers overland by the English crown. So the Calvert family was given that in Maryland, George Calvert, the first Lord of Baltimore, adopted this coat of arms that included a shield with the alternating quadrants featuring the yellow and black colors of his paternal family and the red and white colors of his maternal family, the Crosslands. In 1904, the General Assembly adopted the design as the state flag. And that link is forged between, uh, you know, modern day Maryland and the earliest chapters of Maryland and the Calvert family. And in 1945, the Gold Cross Botany was made the official ornament for the flag staff carrying the Maryland flag. So if anybody's ever seen the cross at the top of the Maryland flag, uh, that's what that is, Gold Cross Botany. And it's the ornament that uh, if you're going to put an ornament over the Maryland flag, the one you should use. A detailed history of the Maryland flag can be found on, on the Secretary of State's website, the flag history. Uh, sos.maryland.gov uh, backslash pages backslash services backslash uh, flag dash history uh, we'll throw the link in the chat box here at some point in time in the town hall as well but all kinds of information about uh, the flag um, and how it should be flown used periods of mourning uh, things of that nature uh, folding and, and 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 destruction of the flag as well covered on this page so statutory authority, the Office of the Secretary of State regarding flags. The Secretary of State is required by law to issue a state flag to the family of a firefighter, policeman, member of the military, sworn member of the Office of the State Fire Marshal or professional or volunteer, emergency medical service uh, provider who's killed in the performance of duty. So in the line of duty death of those types of members, uh, except when the deceased is a member of the military, that flag would then be presented uh, by the state senator of the legislative district in which the deceased uh, member of the military resided or served. Uh, when the member of uh, the deceased person is a member of the military, the flag is to be presented uh, to the family by the Department of Veterans Affairs. So the Secretary of State is customarily entrusted with the role of educating the public as to the history, protocol, and appropriate display of the Maryland state flag. 
individually and as it's flown with other flags. Uh, so we're going to talk about that a little bit later on. The Secretary of State also issues flag alerts to other agencies when the Maryland State flag, the U.S. flag, or both will be flown at half staff. And we're going to get into that uh, in detail here shortly. So by executive order, the governor authorized representative, uh, the Maryland flag shall be flown at half staff on any occasion deemed appropriate and for a period prescribed by the governor or the governor's representative. Uh, this is an executive order uh, that was uh, 1999, 0101.1999, so the year 1999. So uh, flags get lowered. Uh, almost entirely because of a presidential proclamation or a governor's order. There are a few annual flag loverings that are uh, set out in a federal law or by practice uh, in, in U.S. Or, or Maryland. So the Secretary of State issues a flag notification to lower the U.S. and Maryland state flags when a presidential proclamation is issued or the governor orders the Maryland flag lowered. So uh, thinking about some tragedies that occur, uh, the president orders the flag to half staff for a certain period of time. Uh, if that happens, we will send out a notification to our flag distribution list uh, with that information uh, from the presidential proclamation to lower the flags. Uh, so you see this sometimes on state flags uh, with death of a public official or firefighter or police officer, military personnel on the line of duty so uh, there are certain situations where the governor has the authority to lower the United States flag. Uh, and those are in those deaths of those firefighters, police officers, or military personnel in the line of duty. So we're going to have a chart here that follows that explains uh, the, the prescribed time frames for each, uh, each flag lowering. But in general, president orders a U.S. flag to half staff. Governor orders a Maryland flag to half staff. And on occasion, the governor can order the U.S. flag to half staff per federal law. Mike, uh, it's worth noting now, just in case I uh, skipped over it earlier, folks, just please know that the information we're providing today is for informational purposes. It is not legal advice. Uh, so just to be aware of that. And also, I'd ask if you have questions to hold them till the end, because I bet you the questions will be answered as we proceed. And we'll just ask that you allow us to answer those questions at the end. Sometimes folks unintentionally offer well-intended but not accurate advice. So just to clarify the source and to um, ensure the accuracy, we'll ask you to hold off on res responding to any questions in the chat box. Thanks so much. Back to you, Mike. Yeah, thanks. Um, so Armed Forces, Secretary of Veterans Affairs, Maryland Veterans Affairs, uh, informs the Secretary of State when a member of the Armed Forces dies in the line of duty. And this is a situation where both the U.S. and Maryland flags are lowered, uh, and they're lowered from sunrise to sunset on the day of internment uh, when a member of the armed forces dies in a line of duty. Uh, so that member of the armed forces is either living in Maryland or from Maryland. And um, this is one of those situations, again, where both flags can be ordered to have staff by the governor. Uh, federal law, uh, the public law, 110-41 uh, authorizes the governor to order that U.S. flag be flown at half staff uh, in this situation. A police officer, firefighter, correctional officer uh, in the line of duty death. Uh, so when that happens, uh, the Maryland flag is lowered to half staff immediately. Uh, and also per federal law, the governor has the authority to lower the U.S. flag to have staff uh, when a first responder is killed in the line of duty. So first responder, again, thinking police, fire, rescue, correctional officer, first responder dies in the line of duty. Both the U.S. and Maryland flags can be ordered to have staff by the governor and the secretary of state's office. We're going to issue the notification through our flag distribution list. Um, so if you received an email about today's town hall, you're on that distribution list and um, you get the notification about the flags being lowered. And this is part of the Hometown Heroes Act, um, Public Law 115-123. Governor's dis uh, discretion to lower flags, so the governor has the discretion to alter time frames to lower the Maryland flag. Orders from the governor uh, regarding the Maryland flag supersede the protocol in the chart that follows. So we're gonna go over chart next. 
that has the general protocol for when flags are lowered uh, in situations where the Maryland flag is to be lowered or can be lowered, uh, the governor's order would supersede anything on this protocol list with respect to that flag. So just going down the list here, uh, and this is actually something you could find on the homepage, uh, sos.maryland.gov. There's an image of the flag. Uh, presently, it'd be flying a full staff, both Maryland and U.S. flags, and you can actually click on a link to protocol uh, that describes how this stuff works. And on that uh, protocol sheet is this chart here that explains how long the flag goes down in different situations. So going from president or former president all the way down to governor of the state, those are all generally things covered in federal law and they prescribe a certain amount of time for which the flag should be lowered. And then when you get down to Maryland Lieutenant Governor, uh, through the bottom there uh, are, are things where the governor is generally gonna lower the flag and uh, in, in these situations. So things the governor would lower a flag for uh, passing of a Maryland Lieutenant Governor, delegate, senator, county executive, former Maryland Governor, Lieutenant Governor, former Congress, uh, uh, person or senator, delegate, state senator, county executive. So you go down this list here, uh, current government officials, former government officials. Uh, these are all situations where the Maryland flag is going to be lowered for that prescribed time. And then as you get to the bottom there, firefighter, police officer, correctional officer, member of the armed forces. These are the scenarios where the governor can order both flags, the U.S. and Maryland flags, to half staff. So just take a minute, uh, get you know, this record. This recording is going to be posted online. So if you miss it, you can always look back at this list. And uh, and, and even then, you can see this list uh, on the flag protocol page. It's on the Secretary of State's own page. So if you're trying to note all this, don't worry. It's in a couple of different locations on our website. Uh, but quite the list. And this kind of explains why things happen the way they do. But that's not to say that the president cannot order the flag lowered for something that's not on this list that happens again oftentimes in uh, situations of national tragedy where they may lower the president may lower the flag and the governor may lower the flag for reasons other than these as well at the governor's discretion so local jurisdictions uh, important to note that uh, county and municipal government officials may order the Maryland flag lowered on property in their jurisdiction. So if the uh, if a particular county in Maryland wanted to lower the flag in honor of somebody at the county, they could lower the Maryland flag and their county flags on their properties that are under their jurisdiction. So, and this is covered by an executive order. You know, again, part of that executive order from 1919, uh, of 1999, 1919, 1999, the Maryland flag should be flown at half staff when ordered by county and municipal government officials on all property under their jurisdiction. So there is an authority to do that. We get asked that question, uh, you know, every now and then. That's a frequent question on these town halls. Make note of that, though, folks. You can do that if you're from a county or municipal governor. So honoring heroes to so the uh, the following days honor is uh, U.S. flag notifications. Uh, so both the U.S. and Maryland flag are lowered at sunrise and raised to full staff again at sunset on the following days. So you have Peace Officers Memorial Day. Uh, I'm going to skip Memorial Day and come back to that. Patriot Day. Uh, it's the National Firefighters Memorial Service, which is part of Fire Prevention Week and National Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day. All four of these days flag is lowered to half staff at sunrise, returns to, to full staff at sunset on these dates. And we put out a notification a day or two in advance, at least, of, of these days to remind folks of that uh, through our flag distribution list. And on Memorial Day, the reason I skipped that is it's a little unique in the sense that uh, the flag is lowered to half staff at sunrise, but it is raised to full staff at noon on Memorial Day. So it's only at half staff from sunrise until noon, whereas the rest of these are sunrise until sunset. So that said, Mike, it's it's worth noting that periodically, the, particularly the president will have the flag lowered from midnight on the uh, whatever the day is until 
midnight the following day. So just be aware that there are variations and that certainly was in the purview of the president to make that determination as it is for the governor to make the determination for matters regarding the state of Maryland. Right, right. Yep, every now and then you'll see a uh, midnight to midnight. And if that's the case, we'll throw that in our uh, our notification alert as well uh, to try to, to draw that out better for everybody. That, that does happen, so I'm correct. Uh, Maryland flag lowering, Civil Rights Heroes Day, February 20th. Uh, recognize, encourage, sacrifice, relentless efforts of civil rights and abolition leaders throughout the history uh, of the state and reaffirms our commitment to be a land of opportunity, hope, and justice for every citizen. Uh, this is a Maryland flag lowering, so this is a, a thing that we do in Maryland or the Maryland flag to half staff on this particular date. Uh, a couple more dates where that happens in Maryland, Fallen Heroes Day, the first Friday in May, and uh, Maryland Fire and Rescue Services Memorial Remembrance Day, the first Sunday in June. So Fallen Heroes Day, uh, Civil Rights uh, Heroes Day, and Maryland Fire and Rescue Services Memorial Remembrance Day are the three days in Maryland where the Maryland flag is lowered to half staff. On all of these days, the United States flag is still flown at full staff. It's just the Maryland flag that is at half staff on these dates. So different uh, flags just to make note of here, uh, uh, prisoner of war, missing in action flag, the honor and remember flag, uh, the POW MIA flag honors those that are prisoners of war and missing in action. Uh, it's a flag called the honor and remember flag. It's designed to honor all members of armed forces who died in the line of duty. The secretary of state's office, uh, you know, there's not any notifications that are sent by us about POW, MIA, and honor remember flags. Uh, so we're sending out notifications about when to fly flags at half staff. Uh, but there are certain dates where the POW, MIA flag and the honor remember flags are flown uh, on the state house grounds. And those include Armed Forces Day, Memorial Day, Independence Day, Veterans Day, uh, the Saturday and Sunday closest to Memorial and Veterans Day, and uh, POW, MIA Recognition Day, which is the third Friday annually in September. So there are certain days of the year where this is going to be flown on state house grounds. These are those days. And the POW MIA flag and the honor remember flag are flown on state house grounds on the right side of the building. So the side generally facing Road Boulevard. Uh, there are some flag poles uh, in different locations on the state house grounds. And uh, these flags are flown at one of those locations. A little more information uh, on POW MIA flags. So with the exception of the state house, a state building that is a historic building or a state building that has a flagpole attached to the building that is determined to be structurally unable to withstand additional flags, uh, the Secretary of General Services and Transportation uh, shall cause the POW MIA flag to be flown on the grounds of all state buildings under their control whenever the United States flag is flown. So what does that mean in a kind of plain English? If you're a, the sta a state building is flying the US flag, it's also gonna fly the POW MIA flag unless that flagpole cannot handle another flag uh, or that uh, is a historic building uh, of some nature. So the POW MIA flag is flown below the United States flag on the state buildings and the POW MIA flag is flown at half staff when the United States flag is flown at half staff. So when only the Maryland flag is flown at half staff, the POW MIA flag is flown at full staff. So the POW MIA flag is flown relative to the position of the United States flag. US flag at half staff, POW MIA flag at half staff. If the Maryland flag only is at half staff, but the US flag is at full staff, then the POW MIA flag is also at full staff. Uh, Blue Star Banner flag, uh, it's a tradition uh, dating back to 1917, uh, World War I, and uh, uh, individuals, two sons served on the front line and the banner became an unofficial symbol for parents with uh, children in active military service. So you may see this flown on the window, somebody that has a child in military service and um, so the Department of War during World War II issued specifics on the manufacture of this flag. 
and guidelines indicating when the service flag can be flown and by whom and uh, authorized even a service lapel in 1967 uh, regarding this flag. So families display banners when loved ones are serving in active duty in the U.S. Armed Forces. The blue star represents one family member serving. And you may see a banner that could have up to five stars. So if you have the family has five members of the family and uh, actively serving, you, you would see five stars on here. So a, a basically a star per family member. I bet some of you have already seen them, perhaps even have displayed this flag in your own windows or doors. My brother and his wife have one in honor of my nephew, who was an Air Force officer. <clears throat> so it's very common. And if you're not familiar with it, now you know what it stands for. Yeah, and the uh, the American Legion, Legion uh, rekindled the spirit uh, after the September 11th, uh, 2001 terrorist attacks. They provided these banners to military fam family members, uh, families across the nation. So if you have more information, you can actually find uh, uh, through the American Legion's website uh, regarding flags in general, but in particular this flag, uh, www.legion.org. And then specific to this flag, it would be backslash troops, backslash blue star. So some general information about protocol, proper display of the Maryland flag. Uh, so the Maryland flag should always be raised briskly and lowered slowly and ceremoniously. Uh, the flag should be flown with the black stripe on the diagonal band of the first quarter at the top of the flag staff. So that picture to the left there uh, you see the four quadrants of the flag. The upper corner should always be uh, that uh, the black part of, of that corner. The lower right corner would be the yellow part to the yellow corner of the flag. Only a gold cross botany may be used as an ornament on top of the flag staff. Uh, I do want to mention at this point, too, that you don't have to have an ornament on top of your flag staff. It can just be your regular cap or something like that. Uh, folks will uh, you know, ask us a lot of questions about what's an ornament. Um, you know, the, the ornament that you can fly here is the cross botany. Uh, so in other words, generally speaking, uh, you wouldn't fly. You know, sometimes you see the, the bald eagle above the American flag, the U.S. flag. You wouldn't put a bald eagle above the Maryland flag. You'd have nothing or you'd have the gold cross botany. Um, and uh, so that's this is what it would look like uh, on top of the flagpole and how the Maryland flag should be displayed when flying from a flagpole. So some more information, lots of words on this page, but I'm going to try to say it in a way that makes sense here. So we get a lot of questions about how you display a flag when it's not flying on a flagpole. Say maybe it's being hung from the wall or hung from a wire across the street or something like that. You see sometimes in parades. Um, so the Maryland flag is displayed in, in any manner other than being flown from a flagstaff. It should be displayed flat, whether indoors or outdoors. And the Maryland flag uh, can be displayed both horizontal, horizontally or vertically. Uh, and that first quarter should be on the upper left hand side if you're looking at it so a lot of times when the flag protocol is written it says from the flag's own right which basically is just the observer's left so if i'm looking at this flag the first quadrant corner should be in the upper left if i'm the one looking at this so think about when you're laying setting the flag up uh where are people going to be looking at it from and uh if you're looking at it from that area uh the black corner should be in the upper left the yellow should be in the lower right just like if it was flying on a flagpole. So uh, same with the U.S. flag. It can be displayed on a wall or hanging from a, from, from a, a wire or something like that. Uh, if it's laying, you could display it horizontal, horizontally or vertically as well. And the blue corner where the stars are is going to be in the upper left-hand corner just as displayed in that image. Uh, the Maryland flag uh, or I'm sorry, the, the U.S. flag takes a position of honor. So from the U.S. flag's own right or in the other, in other words, the observer's left. If I'm looking at these flags and they're uh, hung together on a wall or hung together over a street or something like that, the observer's left, uh, the U.S. flag should be there. The Maryland flag should be to the right uh, because the U.S. flag takes the position of honor when flying together with the Maryland flag. So this is how you're going to see it displayed. 
uh, if it's displayed properly in a public setting. The Maryland flag also, just of note, should never be larger than the U.S. flag. They can be the same size. The U.S. flag can be a little bigger, but the Maryland flag should never be larger than the U.S. flag. Again, position of honor, U.S. flag has that as the national flag. Same thing, again, with the height on which it's hung uh, should generally be at the same height, but the Maryland flag should never be higher than the U.S. flag. The U.S. flag is the one that takes the position of honor. It should always be the highest level or higher than any other flag it's flying with. And, and that's true for all flags. Sometimes, you know, you'll see county's flags or other flags that are um, also being flown, but no flag should fly higher than the United States flag. Exactly. So we, we also get a lot of questions about display with other flags. And when the Maryland flag is displayed within the state of Maryland, it should occupy the position of honor. So again, the observers left the flag zone right after the U.S. flag um, and before the flag of other states. So if you're looking at a situation where you're flying the U.S. flag, the Maryland flag, flags of other states, and then maybe local jurisdictions, it's going to go U.S. flag, Maryland flag, then other states, and then the counties and cities, uh, county or city flags in Baltimore. And if it's being flown with other countries, U.S. flag takes the position of honor, then the other countries, then Maryland, then other states, then city and county government flags in Maryland. So again, the position of honor, the flags right, the observers left. If I'm looking at these flags, like you're looking at them now on your computer screen, the U.S. flags to the left, and then on down the line in, in, in position of honor. Um, if you're flying a bunch of flags together, uh, the, the flags should otherwise uh, be generally ordered in state flags, I should say, uh, in order of rank by which they join the union. So Maryland was the seventh state to join uh, the uh, U.S. or sign on to the Constitution. So we're the seventh uh, flag. The other flags are flown in order in which they join the union. So interesting side note on that. And again, all this information can be found on the Maryland flag protocol pages. And uh, so lots more information than just what's being shown here on those pages. Uh, a couple other notes here. We talked a lot about uh, flying the flag at half staff. You're doing that for a period of mourning. So different information about periods of mourning, just to, to point out a note here. The Maryland flag should be flown at half staff whenever the U.S. flag is flown at half staff. So half staff, what does that mean exactly? One half of the distance between the top of the flag and the bottom of the flag staff. So halfway up um, and uh, whenever the U.S. flag's at half staff, the Maryland flag's at half staff. Again, talking about positions of honor, the Maryland flag should never fly higher than the United States flag. So if the U.S. flag is down, so is the Maryland flag. Although it's, again, not always true in reverse. If the U.S. flag is at, no, no. at half-staff, the U.S. flag could still be a full staff. Yes. By order of the governor or his no, representative. Can you folks, please, please um, mute yourselves. Thank you so much. Go ahead, Mike. Thank you. Um, uh, by order of the governor, as authorized representative of the Maryland flag is flown at half-staff. Uh, for certain situations here, the Maryland flag shall remain at half staff for the period prescribed by the governor or the authorized representative. So we mentioned earlier, um, you know, the governor really can can make the dis decision at, at their own discretion and flag the fly the flag at half staff for whatever period uh, they prescribe. Uh, generally, the protocol is what's followed, but they can deviate from that if they choose. The Maryland flag should be flown at half staff uh, when so ordered by county and municipal government officials on all property under their jurisdiction. So just reiterating, again, the county government has the ability to lower the Maryland flag to half staff on their property uh, at their discretion. So any property under their control, they could also fly the Maryland flag at half staff on. They don't need our permission or the state's permission to do that. They have that authority uh, per that executive order we discussed earlier. 
Uh, there's also a flag folding protocol uh, that you can find on our website, the proper steps to fold a Maryland flag. So you see on the left-hand side what it looks like at the beginning, and on the right-hand side what it's going to look like at the end when that flag is flown, or when that flag is folded, I'm sorry. Um, and this is more information. Again, we'll throw this uh, link to the Maryland flag info in the chat box again. And um, so everybody has that link, and it's got a lot of information. Um, on those pages and you can kind of follow through and read, you know, if anybody's ever just curious of why things are the way they are, um, you know, this explains that and, and how to follow those steps to take proper care and display of the Maryland flag. And I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't give attribution to Gary Villanueva, who at that time was at the Maryland uh, Department of Military and he and his colleagues created that flag protocol specifically for us for use here so thank you mr villain waiver yes yep for sure and um uh one other uh thing here to mention too i mentioned the flag distribution list you can actually subscribe to the flag distribution list so you can get notifications of when the maryland flag or the united states flag should be flown at half staff and uh you can do that actually by going to sos.maryland.gov and uh on our home page uh, you can click on underneath the uh, image of the flags. Uh, there's a little paragraph that explains how you can subscribe, and you just click here to register. You type in your email address, and you'll be added to the distribution list to receive notifications. SOS, like Secretary of State, dot Maryland spelled out, dot gov, G O V, SOS dot Maryland dot gov. Under the image of the flags, uh, the protocol is found. Uh, and underneath of that is the paragraph that explains how you can sign up for the distribution list with the link to uh, at which you can register uh, to join. So with that, we get to Thanks, the question Mike. answer point. Um, so again, as Mike said, there are a wide array of resources about flags that are available online. The easiest thing probably to do is simply Google it. <clears throat> Information about the American flag, can be found on many sites, including the USA, USA.gov forward slash flag. And of course, there's the American Legion and the DFW that Mike just talked about. And yes, uh, this information is largely found on our own Secretary of State's website, which that I believe Carrie Ann put that website link into our chat box. 